Are your students accessing Chrome extensions that are causing issues in the classroom? Here's how to adjust your Chrome extension policy so that students can only access resources that you approve. Hi, my name is John Sowash. Welcome to the Google Admin Bootcamp. To adjust your Chrome app and extension policy, you'll need to log into the Google Admin Console. From the home screen, we are going to visit Devices. I'm going to open that up, then scroll down to Chrome, and then down to Apps and Extensions. Now, I go into this section of the console all the time, so I've actually gone ahead and pinned this particular section so that it actually appears right up here at the top of my screen, so I don't have to do many clicks, just right there. The first, this is a little confusing, the first page you're going to come to is the overview, which you can't really do much with. So you want to immediately go ahead and switch over to the user and browser tab. This is where we can adjust policies and, and make changes. A couple things to point out on the left side of our screen, we've got our organizational units. That's going to be very important. And then on the right side of the screen, you can see various extensions and apps that have some kind of policy, either they're being blocked or pushed or um, uh, something like that. Let's go ahead and look at your default policy. To do that, we need to click on this button right here where it says additional settings. Now pay attention to which organizational unit you are currently looking at. I'm currently selected on my uh, root domain. So this is going to be the default policy for everything. If you have sub OUs, you can apply different policies. So I can go down to students by grade level or by building and adjust that policy as well. Let's look at the policy for the root uh, domain. Click on additional settings. The default policy for Chrome extensions is to allow everything unless you block it. And that's not really a great policy for a K-12 uh, school. I would suggest that you go ahead and click on this edit button. This is just for the Chrome Web Store. This has nothing to do with Android applications. I'm going to go to edit and then I'm going to change that policy. My recommendation, especially for students, is to block all apps and then I will manage the allow list. So I'll create a list of approved extensions and students can select from that. Now, I don't like this policy for teachers. I want to give my teachers, my staff, a lot more freedom to install things. And so for my teacher OU, I have a different organizational unit. I would go down here, select the edit button, and make sure that they're allowed. And then if there are any extensions that I think are particularly bad, I can block those. So it's going to be up to you how you want to arrange this. I tend to prefer to set the default for everybody to block, and then I'll go in and give approval uh, to special groups like teachers and administrators. That really is the core way to adjust your app policy. Now, um, you'll notice on this page, there are some additional settings and you're welcome to play around with these but this top one is really going to trump everything uh, so for example we can block various uh, types of installations so if i don't want my students to access themes i can just deselect that box uh, chrome apps i can deselect that generally again i don't you don't really need to do that i'm already blocking everything except for what i approve as long as you don't approve any themes then they won't be able to install any themes same thing as you scroll down here you can block extensions by category so one particular one that's you know very challenging we want to avoid is vpns i don't want my students accessing virtual private networks now you can select that but we already set our default policy up here, so these category restrictions are not going to matter. And frankly, there's a bit of a problem with these categories because app creators will frequently miscategorize their extensions because they know that they're being blocked. So if uh, you know somebody creates a game extension and they want students to use it, they're not gonna put it in the game category, they're gonna stick it into some random one um, that you may not have blocked. So there's a couple of other things you probably should uh, set by default. 
Um, external extensions, so these would be extensions that are installed from a, a local file or from a website. Um, generally speaking, I don't want external extensions. Um, this insecure one, this one is not really active anymore, but uh, I would set that to do not allow. We've only been talking about Chrome extensions up to this point. Now, you'll notice at the top of this page, there is a section that says Android applications on Chrome devices. And there's just a allow, do not allow switch. Android applications are blocked by default unless you provision them or approve them. So it's not a huge deal if you notice that it says Android applications are allowed. Students will have the Google Play Store on their Chromebooks. They can click on it, but it'll be completely empty. There's nothing that they can do. So it's up to you. I prefer personally, I'm not a huge fan of Android applications on Chromebooks. They're a ton of work to manage, and I don't find the user experience to be wonderful. There are a couple special use cases, but in general, I try to avoid Android apps if I can. So now that we have our core policy applied, we're going to again click on users and browsers. And this is where we'll begin creating our allow list. Now, there's many different ways to do this. You can see a couple different sources. We can install extensions um, from the Chrome Web Store. This is Google Play um, by app ID and then directly from the web if we have a, a direct URL. When you're adding things in bulk, I have found that the fastest way to do this is via app ID as long as you vetted that extension, you're, you're comfortable with it. Building a whitelist is kind of a lot of work. So to help you out, I've created a list of 50 Chrome extensions that I believe are appropriate for school use. I encourage you to look through my list and verify that you're comfortable with them, but this is an easy way to start building your allow list. Using this list is very easy. Simply copy the app ID, head over to the admin console. We'll click on the yellow plus symbol and head up to install by app extension ID. Click there and paste. Doing it this way just saves a lot of extra clicks. This will open up the app installation policy page. So we're creating a whitelist. I want to allow installation. For most extensions, that's what I would recommend. There may be a few Chrome extensions that perhaps your school is paying for and you might want to push or pre-install uh, those extensions. And so here's the force install button and that will you know, force it onto a, a student device. Generally speaking, you don't wanna to install too many Chrome extensions. I find that they're kind of like prescription drugs. If you take too many, they really mess you up. Um, so I prefer to just allow students and teachers to install the ones that they want. If a teacher really wants a Chrome extension, they can direct their students to go to the web store and install it. I don't like pre-installing extensions for everybody because not everybody might take advantage of it. Uh, pinning the extension will make it appear up on the Chrome browser. Um, so these extensions that you see here are pinned in place. The ones that are not pinned are hidden behind this puzzle piece um, and drop down below. Now you'll want to curate your list of Chrome extensions, preferably before you change your policy and block them all. Because uh, if teachers are actively using particular extensions and you block them, they're gonna lose access. So I would recommend create your whitelist, then change your policy. That will pull all the bad extensions off of student devices, but if they have any good extensions, it will allow those to remain. Now, you certainly can create as many whitelists as you want. So right now, I'm selected in the staff OU, so I'm approving an extension for that particular group of users. Most of the time, I'm just gonna approve them at the top level, uh, there are a few extensions that maybe are only appropriate for high school students or middle school and up. And so I'll, I'll avoid that by going to those organizational units. Having a good organization unit structure is really critical for managing your Chrome extensions effectively. I have a whole different video on setting up organization units in a school environment. You can check that out if you're not comfortable with how your OUs are, uh, are configured. Now, sometimes there are some special considerations. One such consideration is you have a group of students who's taking a kind of advanced course and they need access to an extension that you may not be comfortable allowing everyone else in the school to have. 
Right now we're looking at our organizational units, but we can also deploy Chrome extensions by groups, security groups. Now I have a whole video on how to set up and utilize security groups for situations just like this. So if you want more detailed instructions, I'll link to that uh, video in the description. These groups, um, you would create them using Google Groups, select that group, and then you can approve Chrome apps for that particular group. Any member of the group will now have a special ability to install or access a particular tool. The reason this is nice is because if I've got a 12th grader who needs a special coding program, I don't really want to move them out of their home, you know, 12th grade organizational unit because I'll forget to put them back. This allows me to keep them where they belong, but then add them to that security group, which really only does one thing, gives them access to a particular tool. Here's a few final resources for you. On the screen right now is a video that will help you perform an app audit to figure out which Chrome extensions your students are currently using. If you're interested in my free list of 50 Chrome extensions, that link is in the video description. And you're invited to join me for the Google Admin Bootcamp, my live virtual training to help you sharpen your Google Admin skills.